guys. It's been a while, but I have returned to show you how to hack your own custom intro into Super Nintendo ROMs. I'll be keeping the tutorial up to date at the link in the description. Um, if you have any questions or problems, feel free to leave comments on the video. Also down in the description, take a look at the requirements. Take a minute to gather all the tutorial files and get them in their place, and we'll get started. All right, so let's get started. Go ahead and open up the original folder under images, and we're gonna take a look at the intro.png file. Uh, I'm gonna open this up and show you kind of the requirements for our intro image. I'm gonna open up the image size. Keep in mind the image max size is 256 by 224 pixels. And that's the size that we'll be using. I'm going to make some quick changes to this. You don't have to do this part. Uh, just want you to keep in mind, you can do one of two things here. We can convert this image to a GIF file, or we can convert it to a PNG file. The first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to convert it to a GIF file. And this isn't so straightforward because it uses a special file format that's kind of old. It uses the GIF 87A format. And if I were to export this with Photoshop to a GIF file, it would be in GIF 89A. So I'm just gonna save this real quick over the original PNG file and we're gonna do the conversion. So first option, using GIF to SOPT and XN view. Um, we're going to, I'm just going to open this in XN view classic. So if you've got that installed on your computer, that's what you can use. Going to go into our tools and batch processing, change the options under the GIF CompuServe. Make sure that it's set to output GIF 87A format. And then set what our output file is, or input file, 256 color, save it, and we've got our file. I'm just gonna cut and paste that into the GIF folder and run the GIF to SOPT executable. For each four prompts, we're gonna put in intro, that's just the input and the output file names. So we can copy our call, map, and set files into the image folder. And that's that. That's all you need to do. Now our second option, if we were to convert this to a PCX file, you could use GIMP, you could use Photoshop like I'm using. Um, just make sure that we're doing an index color mode, maximum 256 colors. Um, and then we can save this as a PCX file. If you save it in a regular format, non-indexed, it won't convert properly. So we'll cut and paste that into the PCX folder. Look at the batch file that I made. Essentially, that's just changing the file extensions for the palette data and for the actual binary data into the file extension that we'll need. The actual files themselves aren't any different than the GIF to SOPT output. So we'll just cut and paste those into our image folder. So now we're going to prepare our target ROM file. Uh, first thing we want to do is check for what space is required and see if we've got any room in our ROM to insert that data. So I've opened up the Little Master 3 ROM in HXD and just kind of scrolling through, you can see that it's not too easy to see um, if there's any free space for us to insert things. So I'm just, I've selected it 
and we've figured out what our length is, the total length of the existing ROM. And what I'm going to do is just show you how to expand it using Lunar Expand. So let's open up Lunar Expand. We saw that the total file size was about 2 megabytes. So we're going to expand it to 2.5 megabytes. I'm going to just select the ROM and it's expanded. Now that's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and open up the ROM, make sure that it's still working right. You can see that it is 2.5 megabytes. And look at that, it's still working. So that's good. All right. So now that it's expanded, I'm gonna quickly show you how to convert PC ROM addresses to Super Nintendo ROM addresses. So let's open this up and real quick, we're just going to get our last address right where our free space is. So that was the total ROM size before, but we'll go ahead and write that down, 2000000. And that's the hex address, the PC hex address. If we put that into lunar address here, it will convert that to a SNES low ROM address. We'll just keep that in mind for the moment. And we can actually start uh, getting ready to build our code. I'm just gonna open up one of these one by one in the hex editor so we can see what the total file size is. So I'm just doing a control A here. You can see right there, it shows us our, our total length. And that's helpful to determine where we're gonna put things in the free space. So go ahead and write these numbers down. Or if you're looking at the tutorial, I already have them noted for you. So you won't have to remember this, but if you're doing this on an actual um, set of files that you made for your intro, you'll want to write these down. So that was the set file. This is the tile map file. Uh, go ahead and note the total length of that. It's not likely that the map, the tile map file or the color information file, this is the, the palette information, is going to change file sizes, but your actual set file, which is your binary image data, will change. But we're gonna be putting that at the end of everything else, so you won't have to worry about um, worry about where that's going. So I'm gonna open this up in BeastNest Plus, and we're going to get address where the ROM actually starts executing. You'll see what I did is I actually did a break and then I did a reload ROM and then I did a step to see the address of the actual Super Nintendo instruction. All right, we're ready to start modifying our code. So go ahead and open up the intro.asm file. You can open it in any editor you want. I'm using SignWrite. This is the address where the code is starting execution. It's also called the reset vector. Now we can put the new code offset, which is the address that we copied into lunar address before. I'm just gonna copy and paste it here. Now the return code offset since we know that our code is going to be overriding four bytes of instructions at the beginning, we're going to put the return offset to right about where that rep command is. So we're going to be returning to executing right about there. So I'm just going to copy and paste that address here. And uh, so our new code offset takes up about 300 bytes. 
So 300 from 408000. So you just add 300 to that and that's where our palette data will be stored. So we'll go ahead and change this org to that. And we need to set the bank here. We're just setting the bank and the offset separately. Uh, it's just how our code is written. So we need it to put in there twice. So this takes up about 200 hex bytes. So we'll just add two to that. And we got four zeros, eight, five, zero, zero. And we'll go ahead and put the bank and the offset right there for the map data, the tile map data. Next thing that we'll do, uh, we'll just start this one off on a completely different bank. So since those are all on bank 40, we'll put this one at 41. So 418000, first bank's 41. We'll make second bank 42, just in case our data overruns that original bank. If not, it won't matter, but the starting offset's always gonna be 8000 for us. We have all of our variables set, essentially. We just have to have our code execute those first three instructions that we removed, that we're overriding in code, essentially. So we'll put CLC, XCE, and uh, SEP20. I'm gonna go ahead and enable the mosaic effect as well. And we're ready to build our code. Let's look at the batch file. It's pretty simple. We just need to make sure that the file names match up right here. So if that's what you wanna do, you can do it right here. Change it, save it, run the batch file. And when it's run, it just says assembling done. It'll show any errors here if there are any. And we can go ahead and run the ROM and see if it worked. And it looks like it worked just fine. So um, that's essentially how you do it. If you check the tutorial link below, it has kind of a step-by-step -step of everything that's in this video. It goes into slightly more detail. And if you would like to, you can look at that. Go ahead and like the video if you liked it. If you hated it, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. I don't really care. I'm not on here very often anyway. So, <laughs> um, hope you guys got something from the video, but that's it. Have a good one.